Yes, um, I'll just share my slides. Okay. Can you see my slides? Yes, yes but Dr. Randy. So we'll uh, proceed. So just a few uh, talking points, at least I think uh, four, that uh, we can start the conversation with. So as mentioned by Ma'am Nina, uh, the Lenten season is uh, on its third week and the Holy Week is just around the corner. So might as well uh, take the time for the deep uh, dive on uh, one of the intangible heritage of Marinduque has, which is uh, Murion. And I believe Sir Chito would uh, uh, focus on more salient details. So I'll just provide the talking points and the general uh, themes of uh, the Murion uh, tradition in Marinduque, its roots and significance of uh, Morionist festival in Marinduque, Philippines. So I'd like to begin with the flow of the discussion. So I'd like to uh, start with some definitions of what Murion is. So I dub this uh, part as Murion linguistics. And the, the second part is about the significance and uh, dwell uh, a little bit uh, deeper on the significance based on the local culture profile from two towns in Marinduque. And second to the last part is regarding uh, the program that I am involved with uh, starting last month. Just about the time that uh, we started the Cultura Serie. So I'm uh, the Island Innovation uh, Ambassador for Marinduque Island and I'd like to talk about a little bit about uh, Marinduque Island and innovation. And lastly, uh, I'll provide an overall framework on how to understand the uh, more honest taking of the discussion of Mr. Gino Fatalia, who is a local uh, social science uh, scholar in Marinduque Hello. from uh, Hello. Buena Vista. Although, na ako. <laughs> Sige, magkakape din tayo. <laughs> okay. Later. So, when you hear Murion or Muriones, so we start with some basic uh, definition. And I think uh, Sir Chito would be able to expound on this a little mm -hmm. bit uh, deeper. But uh, on the onset, so let's just keep it simple. So, what uh, Morion means in the dictionary is the Spanish uh, helmet, so the Morion helmet. But uh, there's an alternative uh, explanation. So in the southern part of the archipelago, there are um, those who believe in in Quran and Islam. So they are collectively known as uh, Moro or Muslims. So during that time, uh, they are fearsome and they elicit really an image that is uh, scary among uh, islanders, especially uh, in the Tagalog provinces. So just like Marinduque, where Marinduque is situated. So one of the island provinces in Luzon, in the northern part of the Philippines. So it's uh, joust on, with the uh, children. So they get uh, to refer to them as Moro Yun. So that's the name uh, Moriones came from. But of course, there are some more historically accurate uh, explanation about uh, Moriones. And I think we have a number of English language uh, students here and some uh, communication majors as well. So they can also uh, provide other uh, definitions as well. 
So should you have any uh, questions, so you can interrupt by raising your hands or you can also uh, make use of the chat box. Eh? So I see some of uh, you have uh, annotated uh, the text we read. I, I think I designed this slice as uh, conversational as possible. Okay, so that's the, the main thing. So the uh, more yon is the headgear and the uh, more yon is the designation to the pirates or the Moro pirates that came to island provinces. So moving on. So in a more formal definition from the UP, the University of Philippines uh, Dictionary, uh, Dictionary of Filipino. So this is the first edition. So uh, Anvil, I believe, has produced a more recent uh, edition of the Filipino Dictionary. So the definition of Moriones in Marinduque is the historical drama with uh, Saint uh, Longinus, the, the main character. So it's uh, being reenacted every Holy Week. So during the Pugutan or beheading uh, ritual. Yeah. Yes, yes. Thank you, Sir Chito, for the chat. So this is the definition from the dictionary of UP. So when it comes to Moriones. So in Marinduque, when you go to the uh, seaport, the first thing that you'd see, at least before, we used to see the beheading. And when you go to the capital of Buak, you'd see also the beheading of Longhino. But I think nowadays it's relocated in the Marinduque Expo. So some of my uh, fellow uh, province mates or Marinduqueños, they would uh, attest. So they used to see this beheading uh, tableau of uh, some Roman soldiers there. There's uh, Longhino being about to be beheaded. So this is the, the scene that is going to greet you when you get to Marinduque. So, this is the next part. So, I leave the other definitions to the other participants and Sir Chito. But uh, what I'm going to dwell on is the cultural significance. So, in cultural mapping, there are at least five or six uh, dimensions of significance. So, one is about uh, social significance. Okay. So gentle reminder. So I think uh, it was uh, shown earlier the the house rules. So I'd like to hear more of you during the the open forum. So at this moment. So I'll just uh, continue with the discussion of the second part. So about the significance. So the next uh, dimension of significance is historical so whether or not the event or the particular practice has been uh, undertaken at least uh, three generations ago so i believe since the 19th century this uh, practice has been uh, ongoing since the time of padre junicio santiago of the township of mugpug so it's uh, historical so as mentioned it's also social because uh, it's a play, it's a street theater. So, of course, there's a spectacle. So, there's an audience. There's also the actors playing the, the part. It's also political because there was a time that uh, instead of having uh, persons uh, knighted, so that the queen would knight a person and become a sir or madam. So, in Marinduque, there's a, such a thing as the order of Murion. So it's it served the political purpose of some uh, local politicians. So in the 60s, 
So I think uh, Sir Danny Mandia has uh, written about this in his uh, masteral thesis. So panata sa likod ng uh, masker. So what's behind the mask is the sacred vow or panata. Then of course because this is going to happen it's still going to take place despite the pandemic during the Holy Week. So mahal na araw or um uh, San Semana Santa so the the Holy Week. So from uh, East from Palm Sunday to Easter Sunday. So it's very spiritual if not religious. And uh, to a certain extent, it's also scientific. So I think uh, what I missed here is the static part, probably because uh, Sir Chito would uh, dwell more on this a bit later. So we'll see what the Morion uh, or the person who wears a Morion mask would look like. And it's a scientific basis because uh, what we used to have as mask is plants, uh, flora, so certain types of plants and flowers. And because it's tied up to the tourism industry in the 20th century onwards, so it has become an economic uh, source of income and an alternative seasonal source of revenue among the islanders of Marinduque. Okay? So I'll show you the the cover and I'm going to talk about the dimensions of uh, significance, the cultural significance of the Moriones practice. So this is the first uh, cover. It's from the town of uh, Gasan. So it's the home of another intangible cultural heritage, which is Kalutang. So this is Maestro Tirso. So what this title means, Tingni Idi, is to take a look or look at this. So this is Marinduque Tagalog. Of course, there's an English part of the title, the profile of significant cultural heritage in the municipality of Gasan province of Marinduque. So I'd like to uh, discuss a bit about uh, the... Culture, the cultural significance that is included in the local culture profile of uh, Gasan and what they say about uh, Moriones. So the other part, the other cover is from the town of Santa Cruz. So a bit more formal. So this is the cover of the local culture profile of the town of Santa Cruz. So next to the capital town of Buac, where uh, Sir Chito is from and where Mam Nina is also uh, based uh, earlier in her uh, career in the town of Buac. So Buac has 61 towns, while Santa Cruz, have, I mean barangays or community, so Buaca 61, while Santa Cruz has uh, 55. So this is the second to the largest uh, township in the province. So they focus more on tangible uh, heritage like the, the church and the town hall. But here you can see uh, front and center the, the people who don't mask off. Murion. Okay. So I'll also talk about the significance, the cultural significance based on these two uh, local culture profile. So firstly, so I'll just uh, go back to Gasan. So the first uh, significance is spiritual. So this is arrange according to importance. So what is important, to, at least for the people of Gasan regarding uh, Moriones, spiritual. Morionan is a tradition uh, of Panata 
and practice the three and acts the biblical story of Longinus, who became a faithful Christian from being a fierce and cruel centurion. He fortified his faith in Catholicism. It is also a form of penance to empathize with the pain and suffering of Jesus Christ. Uh, that is why in Gasan and also in the whole province, so uh, Morionan or Moriones is given due importance, especially in the religious aspect. That is why spiritual comes first. So the next uh, significance is historical. So according to the local culture profile of Gasan, Morionan is a tradition that originated in 1807 and that has practiced for more than 200 years now. It emphasizes the biblical story of the one-eyed blind Roman centurion named Marcus Longinus was designated to crucify and execute Jesus Christ. He stabbed Jesus on the side with a spear where droplets of his blood dripped into Longinus' eye, after which his blind eye healed. Longinus then proclaimed that his faith and converted to Christianity. With this new faith, he left the army but got arrested and later sentenced to be beheaded. So that is the reason uh, there are at least two uh, tableau or uh, a scene uh, about the beheading of Longhino. So among the Murion, so Longhino is the most unique uh, Murion because he is blind on one eye. So when he is about to uh, crucify uh, Jesus and he stabbed while he was uh, uh, crucified, so he was healed. And because of that, historically, it is uh, accurate that he is uh, a whistleblower. So he is uh, a truth seeker and and that's the reason why he got beheaded. So nowadays, it's very hard to tell the truth. So just like Longhino, that uh, he used to believe that uh, Jesus is uh, just human, but because of his faith in historically, uh, he was uh, healed, at least by, by faith, uh, because of his belief. And for that belief, he cost, it costed his life. So that's the narrative, the historical narrative that the Gasenyo, the cultural nerve of Marinduque, uh, say about the historical significance of Morionan. So aesthetics. So this is what uh, Sir Chito is going to dwell more about aesthetics. So for the Gasenyo, Morionan is an aesthetically significant uh, practice because of its identity as Morionan place in the province displaying handicrafted colorful mask and costume to the delight of spectators. The town of Gasan also organized a contest for the most original Morion and most artistic Morion and the best giant Morion. Such is the practice in the town of Gasan. So I, I think uh, Sir Chito would uh, refer to the uh, slides uh, accordingly. So there are giant uh, Murion and it is very unique to the town of Gasan. So moving on about the social significance of Murionan in the town of Gasan. As Lenten season approaches, a large volume of tourists and guests visit the province, especially the town of Gasan, to witness its rich cultures and tradition that focus on Morionan or Moriones rites and other activities such as daily parades of Morion and giant Morion, procession of saints and images, pugutan or beheading, pagsusunog, pagsusunong ng pupuwa. So what pagsusunong means is uh, donning in the head of pupuwa uh, leaves. This uh, this pupuwa is only worn by women uh, penitents because March is the, the international month of uh, women and Philippines has also adopted this. 
So because March 8 is the International Women's Day. So uh, during Holy Week, it's also uh, empowerment of women. So not only male uh, flagellants are allowed, but also uh, women who has a sacred vow, uh, they could also participate in the Lenten rites, such as pagsusunong ng pupuwa. So next is pataraka. So pataraka is a loud uh, uh, bamboo signaling device. So when you have the procession of saints, so the parat pataraka is the one who signals the the start or they signify the the start of the the procession. And lastly, what is unique to Gasan apart from uh, what is uh, commonly heard of from Marinduque Moriones. So in Gasan, they have the Easter uh, Sunday Festival, which is Gasang Gasang uh, Street Dancing Festival. So uh, during the Holy Week, it's solemn, it's quiet. But during the Easter Sunday, they, they party. So they have this very festive street dancing uh, festival. So a little bit more about the uh, socio-economic uh, significance. So the influx of visitors and tourists are very evident during the Lenten season. This generates income for the economy and boosts the tourism business of the town and of the province as a whole. Uh, through tourism demands, local citizens can showcase and sell their local products, goods, and souvenirs. So this is all from Gasan uh, local culture profile. So should you have any question or notes, you can just raise your hands or use the, the chat box, especially those who are uh, in Pennsylvania. So you could uh, just ask uh, Ma'am Nina or take note of your question. So this is just the first part of the uh, local culture profile and what they say about Morione. So the other half is from the other town, from Santa Cruz. So you could uh, either raise your hands or ask Ma'am Nina or even uh, chat in the chat box. Okay? So even online participants can also take part of the conversation as well. So moving along to the next town, uh, they also have Moriones and they place a, a great value great significance to spirituality. So their uh, statement of significance about spiritual is in Filipino. So just bear with me. So we'll uh, talk about this more later during the discussion. So in Santa Cruz uh, local culture profile, they uh, deliberately uh, decided to write their local culture profile in Filipino, if not Marinduque Tagalog. Uh, Filipino is the national language. Marinduque Tagalog is the variation of uh, the dialect of the Tagalog language where Tagalog-speaking uh, or language users from the Tagalog region uh, makes use of. So historic, uh, spiritual first. So para sa mga marindukenyo, ang pagsali sa pagmumuryon ay isang panata o isang pagpapahayag ng debusyon, sakripisyo, at pasasalamat sa Diyos. So you already know about uh, muryon. So it's the headgear and the practice of muryon emanated from the town of uh, Mugpog in 18 uh, 57, 1807 is the foundation of the town. I think Sir Chita would uh, cite uh, Monsignor Rolly uh, later on regarding the veracity of the sources about the, the, the founding father, who is Padre Junicio Santiago, was designated as the Cura Paroco. So he's the head priest in the town of Mugpug, which is a part of Buak uh, before or Montserrat di Marinduque. So still very spiritual. So I already uh, mentioned about 
panata or the sacred bow. So it's a promise that you make when you uh, get something in return or when you pray and your prayers got answered. Then pagpapahayag is to express devotion, uh, sacrifice, and uh, your appreciation or your thankfulness, being grateful to God. So next up is historical. Again, this is in Filipino. Bahagi ng kasaysayan ng bayan ng Santa Cruz, ang taunang Moryonan. Dahil ito ay isa ng tradisyon ng pagpapanata ng mga mananampalatayang Romano-Katoliko. So as you know, Philippines is a Catholic country for the most part. I think during the the few years, the the last few years, so it has uh, gained some currency again because of the pandemic. So people began uh, going back to the the church, even virtually. So that is why uh, still very important. So spirituality and this time historical because a couple of years back in. 2021, we just celebrated our quincentennial year, 500 years of the start of Christianity. And of course, the beginning of the encounter between Europe and the, uh, the archipelago. So that is why it's historical as well. So kasaysayan is history. So kasaysayan, the root word of kasaysayan is saysay. So when you say history in Spanish, it's Historia. So it's a narrative. But in the Philippines, the Philippine uh, counterpart, Kasaysayan, it's a narrative that is that has uh, significance. So Saysay. Uh, kasaysayan. Say, uh, salaysay or narrative na may Saysay. Okay? So up next is socio-economic. So you would observe there's a trend between Gasan and Santa Cruz regarding uh, significance. So, about socioeconomic significance, ang taunang tradisyon ng Muryonan ay isang pang turismo dahil marami na ang dumadayo upang makita ito. Dahil marami ang taon dumadagsa sa Muryonan, naging pagkakataon ng mga maliit na negosyo upang kumita kasama ang paggawa ng mga maskara. So, it's not to the point of commercializing the production of mask but it's a reality so the morian mask is being produced not only during the holy week okay okay <laughs> so about uh, uh social economic so the last uh, significance is uh, aesthetic so maganda ang mga maskara at kasuotan ng mga nagmumuryon Ang mga maskara ay may iba't ibang itsura na galit na muka ng Romanong sandalo. So, aesthetic, what is pleasing to the senses, it's aesthetics. So again, uh, Sir Chito would be able to explain this uh, better uh, later on. So going back to my slides, so I'd like to spend uh, some of my remaining time left regarding the island and innovation uh, program. So what uh, we are about to uh, implement in Marinduque. Of course, uh, Ma'am Nina to take part of this because for the uh, most part uh, during her time as a student leader, she, she also has ties with the Marinduque uh, Council for Environmental Concern. And this is a very important part of island innovation. So of course, in the island innovation uh, program, so we also have values and uh, principles. So let me just go to the uh, portal of the ambassador program. So the values and principle of an island ambassador is to attend some community meetups. And I hope this uh, weekend or this Friday or anytime soon, I uh, would be able to meet up. So next is to share good practice ideas and collaborate with other ambassadors. So I know of an ambassador from the Philippines in uh, Quezon and also in uh, Mindoro. So I hope uh, we'd uh, get to know more ambassadors, fellow ambassadors in the Philippine archipelago. 
uh, you know all of this the 17 sustainable development uh, goals so if this is something new circular economy so it's good to learn something uh, different and the last is to offer feedback to the island ambassador community so there are numerous platforms for this so the idea is to identify uh, basic challenges so what is uh, present in the island so for example the worsening effects of climate change and meaning the remote location uh, and greater dependency dependency on external so that's why with the uh, oil spill in Mindoro it's affecting the Isla Verde uh, passage, the Verde Island passage, which encompasses Rumblon, Marinduque, Palawan, and Batangas. So one of the major concerns is uh, waste and its management. So pollution, ocean acidification, and loss of biodiversity, among others. So in the end, what the island the Innovation Ambassador Program uh, intends to do is to propose uh, actionable uh, solutions. So to empower the island ambassador, uh, propose innovative solutions and aim for replicability. So with other uh, small island and developing uh, states. So this is about the uh, island ambassador program. So let me just uh, wrap up. So I've talked about the challenges. So and the solutions. So. Uh, this is important. So last year, so there's a webinar sponsored by the uh, National Museum. So this is the talking points. So this is panata at kababaihan because uh, it's not only week only, but also the uh, March uh, Women's Month. So with EJ Bulata, uh, historic uh, his history uh, instructor from the University of the Philippines. Uh, Mr. Brian Virai, who is our visiting researcher, uh, went back to Australia National University and yours truly. But uh, among those participants is Ma'am Glynis Rasa, who is uh, the head of the BS Tourism Management Program, and Sir Jimbo Fataya, who wrote something about putting the Moriones uh, practice into perspective. So when the open forum discussion uh, sidetrack to Morionan uh, identity, the issues of culture appropriation and commodification. So there are at least three points. So there is a parallel observance of Morionis, not only in the town of uh, Mugpog, which arguably originated the uh, Morion, but there's also in other uh, towns in Marinduque and other uh, provinces outside of Marinduque like Quezon and Mindoro. And additional points as reaction or commentary. So, quote unquote, it's an issue about ownership. Who owns uh, Moriones? Or who owns this practice? My response to this is it's a shared uh, practice among islanders. So it's not only the the Marindo Kenyu who owns this, but of course, according to literature, so you can trace it uh, historically, and we can articulate this by citing. Uh, accounts and uh, documents. So at least three points just to uh, end my presentation. So one is Morionan as a Lenten rite, two, the Moriones as festival, and Morionan as indigenous and sacred. So it's something that is not uh, touristy, but of course that's the entry level. Uh, the Moriones festival as something uh, tourism related. So regarding uh, the first point, the manifest or intended function of Morionan as de devotion and penance. So this is the more formal part of the uh, discussion. So the next part is regarding the commercialization and commodification. So Morion mask image is commercialized in the form of tourism. So when you go to Marinduque, when someone uh, goes off, so you have uh, a gift of the Morion mask. So it's a souvenir. And it's something that uh, you can also give as a gift. So, but 
beyond the festival and beyond the intangible cultural heritage, there's an original uh, version of Murion, which is Bulaklakan Murion. So it's very rich in symbolic representation with its uh, headgear, unlike the European or Spanish uh, counterpart. So it's also gender neutral as well. And it's opposed to the angry looking uh, centurion. So let me just end with this. So I'll talk about uh, about this topic uh, in May. So I invite you to submit an abstract or probably uh, just uh, attend as participant during the 9th Philippine Association of the Study of Culture, History and Religion, where I'm going to talk more about Marinduque Island Innovation and Local History, Cultural Studies, and religion, Religious Traditions, Heritage Education so during the 9th. Uh, PASI HR International Conference in the island of Catanduanes in the Bicol region. So on that note, I end my presentation and hand it over to Ma'am Nina for the remainder of our discussion. So thank you and uh, we're looking forward to the discussion later on.